This log has got a ton of taper, 16 inches at that end and only 12 at that end. So I'm gonna raise this end up. I've got tow boards right in here. It's just a, I think they're a six ton bottle jack, which is plenty for any log I'm gonna be able to pick up. I have one at both ends, depending on where the, where the pith is, I guess. So let's raise this end up. We wanna center the pith. What I'm gonna accomplish, I will need to make six pieces of 10 by, no, yeah, six pieces of 10 by 10. Pretty simple setup, eh? Raise that up. Just to make sure I raise my uh, backstop up to suit. Well, there. So I've just centered the pith. I've raised the end of the log up enough that centered the pith so that I'm eight and a half inches off of the deck here, and I'm eight and a half inches off the deck there. I will make my first slab cut off the top. And I'll flip it upside down and then there'll be a big pie-shaped piece come off the bottom. And that will be make sure that my pit is going to be in the center of that 10-inch of that long, of that 10-inch uh, pan. Well, I'm letting that sawmill warm up a little bit. I plug in my light in this, in the room, in my Blue Eddy generator. Gives me a little bit of light in here. And plug in my blower and fan as well here on the floor an extension cord. It's got a three-way extension cord that comes from that generator. Fan. And you'll be thrilled to know that I fixed my ear protection, a little JV weld inside that strap at the right place for my bad head. I've got a head like a buffalo, so maybe I've overextended it. <laughs>
So here's what we've done with this tapered log. Remember where I told you the pith was? The pith is the very center of the log. There's the center of the log. You can see how the rings keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger? That every single one of these rings is an actual year in growth, and that's not necessarily true. If you, some of these could represent less than a year, some of them could be more than a year. I think they would average out probably over the life of it. You could count how old this tree would have been. And it would get you with probably within 15 or 20 years of a tree this size. So we wanted a 10 inch cant. You can see that we're right on the five inch mark in every direction. You know, give or take an eighth of an inch. And that will give me a perfectly stable uh, beam, this is going on under a bridge, so we want to make sure it's as stable as can be. And the other end, I bet it's the same way. I didn't check it yet, but we'll go down and check. I'll raise the sawmill up so you can, so you can see past the blade and the back drag arms. So my pith is right there. That's the center of the log. You can see the rings. All those rings that are going outside of all of that. So we need to be five inches. And five inches. A little tall maybe. It might be a, a quarter of an inch high, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Centered. That, that pith is centered for all intents and purposes. There's no reason why we'd ever have to change that. That's, that's wonderful. So that's how you handle a tapered log. Make sure that you center the pith. That's it. Use a tow board. Use a block of wood. You can uh, use a a jack if you need to whatever you have to do uh, sometimes you can roll the log back and put a maybe a piece of two by four on the bunk and roll it back onto the two by four so that end is raised up you don't have to have tow boards but tow boards are handy um, i could mill these a lot quicker if i wasn't filming but i enjoy filming so we're, uh, i'm giving you the benefit of whatever little bit of knowledge that i may have picked up from my dad who picked up from his dad so on a circular mill that i would have grown up with and my dad would have had it would have been a, they call it a taper compensator. So the, the log would be pushed off to the side and the narrow end and that centers the pith there. But he never went anywhere without a tape measure in his pocket. That was his everyday carry, EDC. I also have EDC at everyday carry and it's a, a tape measure, a Gerber tool or a Leatherman tool, I guess in this case today. Usually if I empty my pockets of what's in there, it's mostly sawdust at the end of the day. There's always a crayon in my pocket. Um, and my phone, I use my phone as a calculator. I've got a board foot calculator app on there. Um, and uh, Norwood has a great log board foot calculator in three different, I think it's Scribner, International and Doyle scale. And I forget which one is the same as the one we use here. We use the New Brunswick log scale here. And I think it's the same as International. And it kind of favors the circular mills more than it does the bandsaw mill. Just it, it uh, removes the kerf. And a circular mill, of course, has got probably five times the kerf, which is the, the amount of meat that the blade actually consumes when the, when the blade goes through. This here should be about 60 thousandths of an inch, no, nope, 80 thousandths of an inch, roughly. And a, uh, so 325 thousandths of an inch would be what a circular saw would be. So you can see it'd be a big difference. So anyway, that's what we do with, with tapered logs. That was a lesson on tapered log milling. So let me uh, get this off, get a stack somewhere out of the way. I'm gonna grab another log. I need five more of these, and then we gotta mill some three by eights or three by sixes, whatever makes sense with the logs that I have. So just for the decking of the same bridge.
So this is by far the largest log that you can possibly pick up with a John Deere 2025R with a 120R loader. Unless you turn up the hydraulic pressure somehow, but then I think you're gonna end up damaging something. This log is 12 feet long. It's 22 inches at the big end. Big taper, big bow in it. And it's 16 inches at the little end. This is a thousand pound log is my guess anyway. I'll look on a calculator here and post the, actually post the, uh, the weight. So there was a little boo-boo. You probably caught it on the time lapse. What had happened was I didn't retract my blade guide on this side enough and it hooked up here, stopped the whole production. Sometimes I can back it up just enough so that the tension's off the blade, but that slab is too heavy. It pinched the blade, pulled it off the rollers, and anyway, that was the end of that blade. These are my Woodlands Mills double hard blades. I would consider them a disposable blade. I can get a few sharpenings on them, but there's not a lot of hard metal in the teeth. You get maybe three, four, five sharpenings tops out of them before that's the end of them so anyway i keep a a good supply of them sharpened in my shed they're ready to go all the time so let's fire another blade on and finish this up this happens i don't get wound up over it all right so let's bring the saw forward fire another blade on it All that drives this uh, sawmill ahead and back is this small 12 volt electric motor over here with a, I think it's a 50 to one or 25 to one gear ratio. It's been working great. I just can't believe that the back track works as well as it does. It'll pull that big slab sometimes with protest, but it, it'll pull that back, that uh, slab back to the slab pile. This is the very next day. The first 16, 17 minutes of this video was uh, filmed on Wednesday, and then I had a little breakdown on my tractor. Nothing serious, but I lost my brakes. Um, and I can get along pretty well in going slow. It's hydrostatic, so pretty much as soon as you let go of the pedal, it stops. But working around the mill or loading the firewood processor, it's important to have functioning brakes. There's a little aluminum, they call it a bell crank, is what uh, what they call it on, uh, I guess, John Deere's parts catalog. And it's a little tiny part. Matter of fact, I'm going to show it to you, the, the broken piece. So this is the piece here. It's made out of, I'm not sure what you call it, some kind of a cast. I call it pot metal. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, if that's even a real term or just something that... My dad made up and I copied them, I guess. But it would be the same thing that like a little die cast toy car would be made out of. And it's on the other side of this brake pedal. So the brake pedal, when you apply the brake pedal way over here, this actually applies the lever that goes to the transmission and it breaks, it splits open, you lose your brakes. So I did tack this together with my TIG welder and it worked for half a day, probably. I had no, I had no thought process that it was actually gonna last forever, that's for sure. But I thought it would be able to finish the day. So I called John Deere and they had one in stock. They weren't gonna be open when I got there, but I took the afternoon, late in the afternoon, left here about four o'clock in the afternoon to go to Halifax, which is about a 45 minute drive probably. And uh, I don't get a chance to ride my motorbike very often. So I loaded up the old steed and the way I went. So got a, <coughs> A nice sunny afternoon ride out of it and they left it outside they've got a shed there that they would leave 
um, some parts in for guys like me that need to go after hours to pick something up to get them out of trouble. So anyway, something I'm having trouble with with this camera is uh, I'm looking at the viewfinder when I should be looking at the camera, the lens. But when I look at the lens, I don't feel like I'm focusing on anything. And when I look at the video again, it looks like my eyes are glazed over or, um, uh, under the influence of something. I don't know if you guys notice the same thing or not, but it's kind of a weird thing for me. Anyway, I'm going to finish. i got two more uh, 10 by 10s to make, and then some probably do some firewood. I've got a few cords that have to be out in the next couple of days, so I'll get these 10 by 10s done. I've got logs coming on the weekend that I'll be able to do all of the 3 by 8s, and I just got a, a good order for 135 2 by 6s, 12 feet long, so I'm going to be a busy boy for a while. This is the perfect log, by the way. You couldn't, this is the textbook, perfect cylindrical, no taper log. This is a 12 foot spruce. It's 16 inches at both ends exactly. And we're gonna get a lot of lumber out of this. So I'm gonna put this on time-lapse. You guys have seen me open lots of logs up before and I'll just let this, uh, I'll do a fake drone shot. I'll put it up on the roof of my tractor. And you can watch the mill go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth a hundred times. So and uh, see what we get out of it. It's a great, a great day for milling.
there I've got uh, six 10 by 10s I did a pretty good that last log the yield was incredible I got two two by eights 12 feet long two two by sixes 12 feet long and one 10 by 10 12 feet long at the end of that little uh, time-lapse video you've probably seen me come up I just come up with a draw knife if there's bark a little wane on the edges I just peel that off it makes the log or the beam look a little better it doesn't hamper the structural integrity whatsoever of those beams are going to be amazingly strong I'm not a bit concerned about that it takes a huge log to get a 10 by 10 you need about a 16 inch log straight actually 15 inches would do it straight no no bows no hooks no taper to get a 10 by 10 cant out of it it's hard to do so but anyway you'll be happy with that i'm sure i've still got some uh three by eights to mill which i started putting a 12 foot on now i'll make a few of those up before i have to go to the firewood yard so i try to film a little bit every day and stitch something together a couple of times a week that makes sense that you guys can uh, see and it looks like you've hopefully they make sense if they don't maybe somebody will let me know but sometimes like today's video that i'm making now it's thursday it probably won't come out till tomorrow maybe later on today but and it's a two days worth of milling a few logs I had lots of stuff to do in the meantime and it wouldn't have made sense to include that in the video but my pastor once said that if you want to succeed in something it goes from a wish to a to a job and what he says about this is kind of cute he says it's time to replace your wishbone with a backbone and just get to work and i get that completely so that's what i'm all about i don't mind working at all when i make a plan for something i take a physical piece of paper and a physical pencil and i write down what i need to do today or what my long-term goals are before i bought this processor i wrote it down how many cores of wood do we need to sell to, to pay for this machine when does this machine become break even um how long when do i want to buy this when do i need to set it up once it lands to the yard so same as a sawmill i poured over numbers and how much the steel is going to cost and this motor here we're waiting for sale on princess auto that's a three thousand dollar motor that you know, I save 400 bucks by waiting for a sale to come on. So anyway, it's so like everything else. You get out of it what you put into it. I get out of my sawmill. I spend four hours probably a day milling lumber, uh, getting orders done. And then I'll spend a couple of hours, maybe three hours in the firewood pile. Now, in the next few days, I'm going to be organizing my wood lot, trying to get ready for my new processor. I got to build a floor to put under it. I want to put a roof over it. You might have seen some what looks like scrap metal but it's a metal gazebo i'm gonna mill some posts that a friend of mine had given me which i've talked about before but anyway that's the end of this video thanks for watching thanks for coming along with me for these uh bunch of years i got well over 300 uh videos you can go back and, and watch them i'm not sure yet if i should start i've got a few playlists but i might take a weekend someday and and organize them and put them in different playlists so people can look for just maybe forestry trailer videos or sawmill videos or firewood videos or mechanical videos or something like that i don't want to just be all over the place It'd be nice to have it organized so that's my next goal i should probably write that down <laughs> anyway have a wonderful uh, day you guys and i'm gonna get back to work thanks again over and out